Hi friends, today we are learning about all kinds of cool sea creatures that you said you wanted to find out some more information about. The first one we're going to learn about today is an eel. Beckham said he wants to find out more about eels. They're so cool. In fact, they look like snakes, but did you know that they are in fact fish? They have gills and they do have some sharp teeth. Well, if you went on to Flipgrid, there's a really neat video about eels. And now it's time for you and I to do some art together in measuring. So you will need a long piece of paper, something really long. You'll need something that you can draw with. And then you'll need a pair of scissors and some glue and your crayons and markers to color with when we're all done. So to get started, I want you to take the arm that you do not write with and I want you to lay it on your piece of paper. So it's going the length of the paper. The longer, the better because eels have really long bodies and we're making our eel um, out of our arm here. So I want you to make sure your fingers are together and your thumb is away from your fingers and I want you to trace your fingers, your hand here, your arm, the whole thing, so that your arm goes from one side of the paper to the other, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is we are going to cut our eel out. This is gonna be our eel. I know it might not look like an eel yet, but it will. So now that you have your, your whole arm traced, Remember, the longer the better because eels' bodies are very long. In fact, they look like snakes, but they are not. They are fish. They have gills, so we're going to have to add gills on here when we're all done. They also have those sharp teeth that we'll add on in just a little bit. But for right now, go ahead and cut on a line. Cut out your eel. Okay, awesome. And now I'm gonna put my eel back up here so that you can see the next step. Okay, the next step is to decorate your eel. Now, eels can be different colors, so I want you to get creative with this. Use whatever colors you want. I'm actually going to make a pattern, and you can too. We learned all kinds of patterns this year in kindergarten. A, B, A, B, B, A, B, C, A, B, C, D. You make whatever kind of pattern you want. So I think I'm going to do um, purple, like a purple line, and then I'm gonna do an orange line. And I think I'm gonna go back and forth with those two colors. So I want you to pick the colors that you want, and I want you to make a pattern the whole length of your eel. Okay, so I got done adding all my purple and orange stripes. I did went purple, orange, purple, orange, purple, orange, purple, orange, purple, and then I did the whole face orange. What kind of pattern did I make? A, B, yeah, except now I'm gonna add a little bit of green in here in between just to finish making my eel really colorful. So wait a minute, it was A, B, but now I'm looking, I see green, purple, green, orange. Green, purple, green, orange. If green is A and purple is B, let's see, it would be A, B, A, oh, a new color, C. A, B, A, C, A, B, A, C, A, B, yeah, that's a different kind of pattern, huh? So cool. Well, whatever color you decided to make your eel, I'm sure it looks awesome. And you can tell your pattern to your mom or dad or grandma and grandpa, whoever takes care of you. Now, we need to finish making this look like an eel. So what I want you to do is I want you to get um, some kind of dark colored marker and I want you to give your eel an eye up here. And then we need to give our eel some gills. Don't forget to give him some gills. So I'm gonna make some lines here on the side. Those gills are helping him to breathe. And then oh, we gotta give him some sharp teeth. So if you have some um, white paper 
We've made lots of teeth before. If you just make a slanted line up and, and just keep doing that back and forth, you're gonna have lots of sharp teeth. So I'm cutting a bunch of sharp teeth right now, and I'm gonna show you where we're gonna add those to our eel. Okay, so here's his mouth. Your thumb, where your thumb separates from your, um, your other fingers, that is going to be our mouth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my glue and I'm gonna glue my teeth to the back of my eel so they're hanging down. It looks like there's teeth coming from the top of his mouth down. Okay, so let's get a couple of sharp teeth up there. Remember, we're gluing it to the back so our teeth can hang down. I know it might be kind of hard to see this right now with the lighting, but as soon as I'm done with that part, oh, look at those sharp, sharp teeth. Okay, so I've got some sharp teeth there, and now I want to put a couple on the thumb coming, coming up from the bottom because when I look at your mouth, I see teeth coming down from the top and coming up from the bottom. So we're gonna do that for our eel. Oh yeah, real sharp. I would not wanna run into this eel. Now, you might decide to name your eel. I think my eel is going to be called Eddie. Eddie the eel. And Eddie's really not as dangerous as what he looks. Now, if you had some of that crepe paper that we used yesterday, do you remember the crepe paper that we had from our squid? If you have some of that, or maybe some of the uh, plastic baggie left over, you could take and you could add this up to the top for the eel's um, fin that kind of runs along the top of, of his body to help him swim through the water. Let me show you. So I'm just adding a little bit of crepe paper. You use whatever you have at home, something that you can make a, a, a ribbon fin, a fin out of to go along the top of your eel's body. How cool is that? I might need to add a little bit more. Awesome. Well, now that I have my eel made, I want to measure it and see how long he is. Okay, friends, so we're ready to do some measuring. For this next part, you'll want to have a recording sheet, something to write with, and then something to measure with. Now, it depends what kind of measurement you're going to do. If you're going to do standard measurement, you want to use something that people all over the world use, like a ruler or a tape measure. So I've got um, Mr. Stewart's tape measure here. But if you don't have any of those things at home, or if you want to do non-standard units of measurement, you just need to find something at home that you have a bunch of that are all the same size. Now, I happen to have these gummy worms that kind of remind me of an eel because of their long bodies. And I have a bunch of gummy worms. They're different colors, but they're all the same size. So I think that I'm going to do both. I'm going to measure my eel with a non-standard unit, these gummy worms, and then I'm also gonna measure him with my tape measure. So let's get to work. Well, I'm going to lay these worms across. Now this is gonna be kind of tricky because they're gonna to wanna to fall, but I'm gonna show you. So we've got one. When you measure, you wanna put something um, tail to tail, okay? So I've got one, two, I'll hold this uh, worm up. There's my second gummy worm. Here we go, here's another one. Three, that's three gummy worms long so far. Whoop. He's falling a little bit. There's four gummy worms. I'm not to the end yet though. Four gummy worms. I'm thinking maybe another half of a gummy worm at least. Oh, yep, we have half of a gummy worm. So I used four and a half gummies. So I'm gonna write four. And then to write half, it's one over a two. That represents half of something. You may have seen this if you've helped mom or dad in the kitchen with baking. Maybe they've used half of a cup. Um, you might have noticed that I wrote Eddie the eel. Now he's four and a half gummy worms. So I'm gonna write gummy worms but maybe you might measure your eel with paper clips or Legos that are all the same size, whatever you find around your house. But now I'm going to measure Eddie the eel using my tape measure. I wanna see how many inches long he is. So let's see, I'm gonna start here at the end of Eddie and go all the way to the tip of his head. 
Oh my goodness, he's 18 inches long. Wow, that's a long eel. Okay, I'm gonna rate 18 inches. Awesome. Well, on Flipgrid, if you decide to do the eel activity, I can't wait to see your eel art, and I'd love to see your recording sheet. And could you tell me what you used to measure with and how many it ended up being? And maybe you can measure in inches too. Maybe you have a tape measure and a ruler at your house, or maybe you want to measure with some non-standard, or maybe you could even do both just like I did. Have lots of fun, kiddos, and enjoy your eel.